right, looking at getting a big girl microphone. Got a new podcast idea. Maybe you're the broadcast recording from home setup needs a bit of an update. There's so many options. What do you do? Like an SM7B that Joe Rogan has, an RE20 from your mum's house, the KMS105s, radio stations like this one use it. Ooh, what are those fancy ethos? Let's not talk about that. An industry favorite like the SM58. All good options. What about if I was to tell you you could get all of them in one package? So how are we gonna get the sound of about $2,500 USD microphones combined in the one housing for well over half that? Easy. Go to Loughton and get one of these, the LS208. It is an XLR microphone. Behaves like a dynamic, sounds like a condenser. What do those words even mean? All right, have you ever used a microphone that's so sensitive, so clear that it it picks up every little like mouth click and popping, the air conditioning turning on and off, and the fire engine going up the street, causing your next door neighbor's dog to cut sick in the backyard. And it picks it all up in the recording. That's probably something like this. A condenser microphone requires an interface to get into your computer, a 48 volt power supply, that's called phantom power. And you probably paid a little pretty penny for it as well. One of the other kinds is called a dynamic microphone. Still needs an interface to get into your computer, but it doesn't need any of that pesky 48 volts power, which means it's not as sensitive, which is good if you're doing recording from home, broadcasting, podcasting, and maybe not ideal situations. Not as sensitive. Doesn't pick up all that background noise. So on one hand, you've got the dynamics. Way more forgiving, but don't sound as lush. Decisions, decisions. So here we go. Better mic placement here. The power of the LS208 is all in the switches here. These fancy looking audio symbols you've probably seen with abbreviations like HP, which just stands for high pass. You mess with the lower frequencies and the high frequencies pass through. LP stands for low pass, which is just the opposite. Mess with the high stuff and all the low frequencies can get through the chain untouched. And that's pretty much all it is. That's how we're going to mimic all those microphones that I was talking about. We're just going to flick these switches and change the actual characteristics of the microphone itself that for some reason has been in the 10,000 kilohertz low pass setting like an idiot. I didn't check before I press record on here. So let's flick it back to... These are the settings that you're going to get straight out of the beautiful rugged box. Might I say, this thing, this microphone is built to withstand the next nuclear war. But if you want it to sound more like one of these, something a little bit dark and moody and broody, all you need to do is flick this little switch over here. And now all that high end, all that top stuff just rolls right off. It's no longer the bright and cheerful, happy microphone built by the lads and ladettes at Loughton in Silicon Valley. No, you get this like super moody podcast sounding to my ears, a little bit muffled kind of a microphone. But if you've got heaps of S's and lots of mouth sounds, uh, this could be a setting that you'll find pretty useful. But see, most podcasts and radio stations who use an SM7B tweak this to make it sound more enjoyable, more lively. And this is a close approximation of the SM7B's closest competitor, the RE20 from Electro Voice. Everyone has been using this in radio stations for years and years. Uh, less woofy, less bottom end, because we've engaged a 50 hertz high pass. But we have also shaved off a bit of the top end with a 10,000 kilohertz low pass as well. But like after hearing that high end information before when we set it back to defaults, it's kind of a shame to use it like this, but that's the RE20-esque. Hey, look, it's the KMS105 from Neumann. Now this is how I've actually been using it in my home studio that we're about to see actually. The top end is left untouched, beautiful, crisp and clear coming through, uh, but we have still kept that 50 hertz high pass filter engaged. Now if you want, you can spend all this money on a kick-ass microphone and make it sound like an SM58. All you gotta do is kill all of the top end and all of the low end and you get a sound that will make audio engineers weep. Now going the opposite way, you'd put everything back to the defaults, how they came from Loughton, or in my case, how it came from Lance at Innovative Music in Australia. 
Thank you so much for the care package, Lance. All the contact details are down here if you want the best gear, particularly if you're in Australia. I reckon the closest competitor to the Loughton LOS, LS208 sound-wise is the Earthworks Ethos. A real high-quality microphone. You can clearly hear that, both condensed microphones. But at the moment, this is like 399 USD. So price-wise, uh, this one beats it. But no switches, just that beautiful... Look at that. Look. Look at that. But I reckon we leave it in this configuration. The 50 hertz high pass filter is engaged. It's going to help with room ambience. There's a PC fan absolutely fanging away in the background here. But hopefully you can't hear that because the LS208 is really good at rejecting background noise. And it's good with getting rid of those plosives, those B's and P's and T's which hopefully one, that uh, switch has been able to help with, but two, the foam windshield. Plosives being uh, the pushing out of the air out of my pie hole into all the precious parts uh, doing precarious things. But with the foam windshield, hopefully you didn't hear that. So let's take it off and see. Ooh, just cleans up that top end even more, doesn't it? Let's see about the pushing of the air out of my pie hole into those precious parts. Uh, doing precarious things. It's pretty good at getting rid of some plosives. Let's put that precious, ooh, ASMR. Uh, it does shave off a little bit of that top end, which can help get rid of some of that sibilant, some of those S sounds as well. Uh, plus, much better uh, with those plosives. Alrighty, let's test this Swiss army knife of microphones. First up, uh, I'm not running into the F8 zoom field recorder anymore. We're going straight into the Sony ZV-E10 camera. So the preamps, you might hear like a little bit of hiss, but it's a little bit unfair. Not everyone has access to a multi-million dollar freshly built radio podcast studio, but in a totally treated room, this is what it sounds like. Or maybe you are in an office type of environment, soulless with furniture, your work paid way too much for, ergonomic chairs, cheap PCs, carpeted floors to absorb some of the sound along with the furniture, but so much glass around reflective surfaces. This is what it sounds like in an office. Doing some remote work only to find out the space you had booked wasn't and you have to improvise. Maybe your podcast stick is recording outside doing Vox Pops on the go. This is what the LS208 sounds like in the real world. Are you the king or queen of multitasking and needs access to high quality recordings 24 seven, no matter where you are, no matter what the situation is? Well, this is what the LS208 sounds like in, let's call it a, an untreated space. Or maybe you are one of the thousands of podcasters and radio broadcasters who found yourselves in rooms eerily similar to this one. Offices, spare rooms, junk rooms. In my case, all of those rooms combined without a lick of acoustic treatment. No paneling in here, just microphones going into USB mixers into computers and just doing your thing talking into the void, speaking to yourself. Uh, in my case, broadcasting on Australia's most listened to radio station ever, 1019 The Fox in Melbourne, and this is what it sounds like. Melbourne's most music weekends. This is The Fox. Our weekend in the best city in the world, am I right? If you are just fanging around town on the M1 or you're heading to do some last minute shopping at Doncaster, if you are in the mood to sing to songs that you know from now, and when you grew up listening to 1019, I would be keeping it on for that Fox feeling with Melbourne's most music weekends. I got my head out this sunroof. I'm like Get that Fox feeling next. Yo, this is Tim Lee. And if you can't decide on what your favourite song is at the moment, is it like a newer one? Is it an older one? Let us make that decision for you and just jam them all together. DJ Konski in the mix next. This is the Fox. You give me That Fox feeling is continuing next. Do you know what's coming up? No, do you? Because I haven't looked forward. It's my weekend. I get to enjoy it now, but I'm sure it's going to be amazing as Melbourne's most music weekends continues for you next. See you by see you. Beefy Fevin next. 100%. So would I recommend the LS208? Would I buy it myself as a first microphone? Maybe not as the first microphone, 
but definitely is the second or third microphone, depending on how far into your microphone addiction that you are. If you are after that lush, luxe sound of a condenser, but you don't have a perfectly treated room, brilliant option. You've got the, the kill switches. The kill sw You've got the switches that kill sounds, depending on how you want it to be. If you want to be able to get right on it and make it sound so beautiful. Oh, man, I really should have a drink here. Oh, that's better. Too much saliva build up there. If, if you want it to sound amazing, but you don't have a perfectly treated room, this is a brilliant option. Excellent at rejecting all that background noise as well. And I know it shouldn't be in this day and age. You've also got to think about video, like what it's going to look like on a stream or your recorded podcast. Looks boss, doesn't it? Looks like the way, in my opinion, how a microphone should look. It looks sturdy, strong. It's reliable as well. This shock mount is excellent. I'm actually, I'm tapping it now in case you accidentally hit it. The plosive rejection as well, even without the foam windshield. Now, I'm, I've been doing this talking into microphones in radio for like 20 years, so I know how to pull my bees and I don't plosive too much, but uh, perp, 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 that's what it sounds like. So there you go, the 208, it is a solid microphone. Uh, until the next one, see you, bye, see you. Hey, you made it all the way to the end of the video. Look at you go. Thanks, helps the L go out. So just commenting and clicking one of these videos. Ooh, I wonder what they are.